Hello guys, so today I'll be giving you a summary on the book The Catcher in the Rye and I will be talking a lot about um, the main character's feelings um, and the theme of the novel and I'll be explaining many things and this is a full summary with many details so basically it's a detailed summary with lots of information which will help you have good notes. So let's begin. So The Catcher in the Rye. Summary, this novel is about a 16-year-old boy named Holden Clawfield. A boy who can't seem to handle the brutality of the real world and thinks almost everyone is a phony. So he mentions phony many times and he thinks that many people are phonies and there are a few rare ones, uh, rare people that are not phonies. His story starts off when Holden was watching the school's football game trying to feel a goodbye after he had been kicked out of school for flunking in four out of his five classes. So while he was failing four out of his five classes and he had to leave, so he was kicked out and he was just watching the game and uh, he, he wasn't in the game, he was like outside, he was watching it and he was just trying to feel some sort of goodbye before going. Uh, the only class he had passed was English, his favorite subject. He visits the history teacher, Mr. Spencer, before leaving. Mr. Spencer lectures him about flunking in most of his classes and not thinking about his future. This annoys Holden. So Holden, he, his state of mind, so I'm going to discuss with you his state of mind for a while. He had a very Jane state of, uh, state of mind, and he wasn't a positive person. Um, he was always kind of feeling down and depressed. Uh, so this kind of shows the coming of age when you are in this certain age where you do not want to listen to anyone and you just feel that certain feeling that uh, Holden is feeling. Not all teenagers, but many of them do feel the way Holden is feeling. So this is coming of age and how Holden is growing as a person. And then Holden tells us about the people in his school, Pansy Prep. So Pansy Prep is a very prestigious school and it is a boarding school. He says that private schools are full of phonies. So he even mentions that um, in the, the, the more rich someone is, the more of a phony they are. Then he begins to tell us about Akeley. So Akeley is a character. He tells us about Akeley who disgusts him because of his poor hygiene. So he describes Akeley many times as a person with very poor hygiene and smells horrible and does not have a very good attitude. Then he tells us about his roommate, Stradler, who is very good looking, but he is a secret slob. So basically, Stradler was a very good looking boy. He, he had many girls, dated many girls, saw many girls, and uh, yet Holden found him a secret slob. Holden always found, saw people in a negative way. Then Stradler tells Holden about his date with a girl named Jane. So basically, there was this girl named Jane who Holden knew and he had feelings for her and once Holden attempted to kiss her. And they were really good friends. Once they were very close to kissing. So Jane, um, then Hayden tells us, um, Holden, I'm sorry, Holden tells us a story about Jane. So once he was with Jane and then Jane's stepfather came and he yelled, well he yelled, he kind of talked to her in a mean way and then, um, Jane began when she had tears flowing through her face and Jane Holden got really close. They were about to kiss, but they did not kiss. Um, while Stradler was on a date with Jane, Holden began worrying about something happening. So Holden was, was well, he feared that Stradler would make a move on Jane. When Stradler, well, he was jealous. That's why he feared that. When Stradler came back, um, Holden begins asking him questions and Stradler begins teasing Holden. So Stradler didn't really take Holden seriously because Holden was, well, he was scared and he was jealous. And Stradler didn't really think that Holden was scared or jealous, so he just began teasing him and brushing it off. That infuriates Holden, so Holden ends up attacking Stradler. They have a physical fight and Holden injures his nose. Then Holden decides that he has had enough Betsy prep. He has had enough of all these bad memories of him flunking his classes, of him finding almost everyone being a phony, of his teacher lecturing him, and now his friend, well, not technically his friend, and his roommate seeing the girl he likes, he just wanted to leave. So he takes a train to New York. He lives in New York, so he has had enough. He goes to New York. On the train, he meets a lady who happens to be a mother of Holden's classmate at Pensy. Holden tells her that her son is very modest and smart, even though he is not. So basically, Holden did not like that woman's son, but he lies and he just tells her that he's a great, modest boy, and he makes up the story. 
and then Holden asked her if she would go get a drink with him, but obviously she refused. <clears throat> Once he reaches New York, Holden has a cab take him to the Edmund Hotel. Holden checks in and gets a room. Holden looks out of the window and sees a bunch of perverts. So that hotel had many weird people and each one was doing weird stuff in the room. Then Holden calls a woman named Faith Cavendish, who had gotten her, uh, so he got a number, uh, that woman's number from a guy who was attending Princeton University. <laughs> Holden goes to the, uh, to the lavender room. He asks for a drink, but the waiter refuses to serve him a drink since he is a minor. So what happens is that Holden wanted a drink, but of course the waiter refused to offer Hayden a drink. Well, Holden a drink, not because he refused, but because Holden is underage. And then he sees three girls and asks one of them to dance. So he was attracted to one of them and he offered her for a dance. She was a good dancer, but when Holden talked to her, she did not answer him. Then when the girls leave, they make him pay their bills. So on top of that, they end up leaving and Holden pays their bill. So he did not really enjoy the dance and then he ended up paying the bill. Holden thought about Jane, the girl he actually liked. They, then they got to kissing, but she did not let him. So they were going to kiss, like I said, but they didn't end up kissing. Then Holden goes to Ernie's, but leaves shortly after he sees his brother's girlfriend. So Holden goes there, but then he ends up seeing his brother's girlfriend and she starts talking to him and then he gets bored. He wants to get out of there and he leaves. And this, this is this constant pattern recognized about Holden and his character is that whenever something that he does not like happens, he does not like to deal thing, with things he does not like. So he just leaves. As you can see, whenever something he doesn't like happens or he sees someone he doesn't really like or someone he's not really fond of, he just leaves. He always likes to exit the situation instead of facing the situation, which is something Hayden, um, Holden suffers with. And by the end of the novel, he won't suffer with that anymore. And Holden goes back to the hotel. In the elevator, the operator asks him if he is over 18. Holden lies and says, yes. And then he asks him if he wants a prostitute and Holden says, yes. The prostitute was named Sunny and she arrives. And then Holden begins a conversation with her. But she just wanted to just do her job and end up, you know, leave. But Holden gets nervous and he just doesn't, he doesn't want to tell her he's nervous. And then he starts talking to her and trying to change the conversation. Then he ends up telling her he has an operation to get out of the situation he put himself in. Um, then um, he pays her and she leaves. Then the operator, his name is Maurice, uh, comes back and demands more money. But Holden refuses, which causes a physical fight. So that man ends up paying, uh, ends up attacking Holden because he wanted more money. So Sonny takes the five, it takes five dollars from Holden's wallet, and they leave. Holden pretends that he is a character in a movie who has been shot, and then goes to bed. So that's also we find out from Holden's actions that he is a quite dramatic person, and he, he overdoes things in a way. He, he is very depressing. Um, the next day, he invites Sally Hayes, a very attractive but phony girl. So Holden, we also recognize that Holden has many opinions on people. They can be negative opinions, but he still just ignores that sometimes and just ends up, um, you know, contacting these people. During the date, Holden offers um, uh, Sally to go to with him to Massachusetts or Vermont. Then Sally refuses and Holden calls her a pain in the... So, and it upsets her and it causes a fight because, and then she ends up telling him that no guy has treated her or talked to her in the, the manner Holden spoke to her in. And also they go to a date and they go ice skating and then they, well, she wasn't really good at ice skating nor was Holden and Holden ended up feeling bad for her. So, yeah. Um, Holden goes to have drinks with an old friend and his friend tells us that he sees a, psycho a psychoanalyst to help him recognize the patterns of his mind. And actually throughout the summary, I've been talking to you about his state of mind and his, the constant patterns of the, th the things he does, the actions he takes. Holden goes to his house to see, um, then Holden goes to his house to see his little sister, Phoebe. Phoebe was a very smart and witty girl. She asked him if he got kicked out of school. Again, he lies, but Phoebe was smart. So Phoebe is smart. So if you want to, uh, to characterize Phoebe, you can characterize her as smart. And she directly knew it was a lie. 
and she knew it was a lie because she is smart, but also because Holden has this constant pattern of getting kicked out of school and not staying in a certain place for too long. Um, so when it was time to leave, Holden took Phoebe's Christmas money. He did not want to, but he had no other option. So Holden was running out of money because he, he, goes to, he was spending money on the hotel. He spent money on Sunny. And then he, is spending, he spent money on the cabs and he spent money on his date with Sally. So that money was running out. He, he, he had to take Phoebe's money, even though he felt so bad for it. At first he refused, but Phoebe insisted. But he did feel extremely bad for it. Um, Holden goes to his old English teacher's house, Mr. Antolini. Mr. Antolini lectures him again, and then Holden goes to sleep on Mr. Antolini's couch. Suddenly, Holden sees Mr. Antolini staring at him, and that creeps him out. He puts his clothes back on and leaves, forgetting his tie. So Holden leaves um, quickly. He just wanted to get out of there because he was, creeped, he, he was creeped out. He puts his clothes in the dark, and he ends up forgetting his tie there. Holden sends Phoebe a letter telling her that uh, he is leaving and to meet him in the museum to tell her goodbye, to wish her. And then Phoebe comes back with her suitcase. She tells Holden that she will be leaving with him because she cannot live without him. So what happens is that, Phoebe, that Holden sends uh, Phoebe a letter through her school. And then when Phoebe finds that out, she, she plans on leaving with him. That shows their clo close relationship. And then um, she tells Holden she will be leaving with him. Holden tells her no, and she begins crying, crying while she's a kid. So she cries. He takes her to the zoo, and Phoebe ignores him. So Phoebe was disappointed. She did not want to talk to him. And then she rides the carousel, and Holden begins to cry while it was raining. So as you can see, there's a lot of drama. So it was raining, and just tears were flowing in his face. In the end, Holden goes home, and he will be attending a new school in the fall. He says that the story makes him miss his classmates and he has a certain quote, which is that don't talk about people too much because you will end up missing them. And actually, I do have uh, my favorite quotes here. So it's just my thoughts. And if I were to recommend the book and yes, I would highly recommend the book, especially if you're a teenager, because as a teenager, sometimes you just have a sense of mixed emotions or you can be going through the same things this character is going through. So reading this book will help and does have great literature. So yeah, and the theme is coming of age, some new words are learned and my favorite quotes, make sure you marry someone who laughs at the same things you do and don't tell anybody anything. If you do, you will start missing everybody. So yes, this is it for the book report. So, so, so thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about the story, please comment down below. Thank you and thank you so much for watching. And bye-bye.